Welcome back to databases. In this lecture, we are going to look at transactions. So we will see how the database management system handles concurrence access and concurrent modification of the database. First, let's have a look at some anomalies that can occur when multiple users access and manipulate the same database in parallel. Let's consider the following scenario. We are standing at an ATM machine and we are withdrawing 100 euros. Behind the scenes, the ATM performs a transaction on the bank's database. Roughly, this transaction looks as follows. The transaction reads the current value in the bank account, decreases it by 100, and then updates the balance on the bank account. After this transaction, the bank account is properly updated to reflect the new balance. Now let's say we want to transfer 500 euros from our checkings to our savings account. Roughly, this transaction proceeds in the following steps. First, the transaction reads the balance on the checkings account. It decreases the balance by 500, updates the balance on the checkings account, so now it's 500 euros less on the checkings account. It reads the balance on the saving account, increases the balance by 500, and writes the new balance back to the savings account. If everything runs through smoothly, then our accounts are correctly updated. The checking account has 500 euros less, the savings account has 500 euros more. However, what if the system crashes just before we get to step number six? Then the balance is reduced on the checkings account, but just before the new balance with 500 euros more is updated on the savings account, the system crashes. So we've lost 500 euros. Because the money has been decreased from the checking account, but it has not been increased on the savings account. This illustrates that we want transactions to be atomic actions on the database. We want such a transaction to be considered as one atomic transformation. It either should succeed fully or not at all. My wife and I have two credit cards for the same bank account. So what happens if we use our credit cards at the same time concurrently? So let's say that I'm withdrawing 100 euros and my wife is withdrawing 200 euros. And we're doing so precisely at the same time on two different ATM machines. So both our ATMs will perform the transaction for the withdrawal. My ATM reads the balance of our account. At the moment, it initially 1,200 euros. So my ATM stores the balance of 1,200 euros on the local variable. Let's say this local variable is called balance. So now my ATM stores the value 1,200 euros. The ATM of my wife does the same, reads the value at the moment on our bank account and also stores it on the local variable, so also stores 1,200 euros. I'm withdrawing 100 euros, so my ATM will decrease the value of the local variable by 100. My wife is withdrawing 200 euros, so the ATM of my wife will decrease the value of the local variable by 200. So now my wife has in the local variable 1000 and I have 1100 stored on the local variable. Now let's say that the ATM of my wife was a tiny bit faster, maybe it has a better network connection and it writes back the new account value. So it updates the bank account with the value on the local variable 1000. So it writes 1000 as the current value back to our bank account. So the database state will be updated to 1000. Now after the ATM of my wife has done this, my ATM writes back the balance that my ATM has computed, 1100. 
So it overrides the value that the ATM of my wife has stored and it writes 1100 as the value of our bank account. So what has happened here? The update of my wife has been lost. And I'm of course very lucky that this has happened because my wife has withdrawn 200 euros, I've withdrawn 100 euros. So we've in total we've withdrawn 300 euros. So starting from 1200, our bank account should end up with 900 euros. But I'm lucky that the update of my wife has been overwritten and I'm ending up with 1100 euros and 300 euros in cash. So actually I've earned 200 euros. This is of course very nice, but the bank will not like it. So this shows that we need to prevent such concurrent access anomalies. This concurrent access anomaly is known as lost update anomaly. On the left hand side on this slide, we see a transaction that we've seen before. The transferal of 500 euros from my checkings account to my savings account. So here we have it written up a bit more detailed using SQL. So we have an update query that decreases the balance by 500 of my checkings account. So I'm the customer with customer ID 1904. Next, we have an update query that increases the balance of my savings account. Again, for the customer with customer ID 1904 for me. So far, so good. But let's say that at the same time, in parallel, there's another transaction running, namely the transaction shown on the right. This transaction computes the sum of the balances of all my accounts. So this transaction runs exactly between these two update queries. So what does this transaction see? This transaction sees a database state where the balance on my checking account has been decreased by 500, but the balance on my savings account has not yet increased by 500. So the query on the right computes a wrong total sum of the balances. The query on the right sees an inconsistent database state. It sees the partial result of another transaction. And this should of course never happen. We should never have that a query sees a partial result of another query. So we will also discuss how to prevent such inconsistent read anomalies. Let's revisit the example of the concurrent ATM withdrawals of me and my wife. This time I'm withdrawing again 100 euros, my wife is withdrawing 200 euros, but this time my ATM is slightly faster, so my ATM reads the balance first, reads the balance of 1200 euros, decreases the balance by 100, and writes the new balance back to the account 1100. Now the ATM of my wife reads the new balance, 1100, it decreases it by 200, and then it writes back the new balance, 1100 minus 200 is 900, so it writes 900 back as the new value on our bank account. So far so good, but now let's assume that there is a technical problem in my ATM. So my ATM recognized that there's a technical problem, it cannot hand me the 100 euros. So my ATM aborts the transaction and undoes all the actions that it has done before. So my ATM actually does not give me the 100 euros and it undoes the update, namely this 1100, it undoes it and writes again 1200 on the bank account. However, this is too late for the ATM of my wife. The ATM of my wife already has seen the new database state of 1100, has decreased it to 900, 
And now after my transaction is aborted, it writes back the balance of 900 to the bank account. And this is of course wrong because 1200 minus 900 is 300. So it looks like we have gotten 300 euros, but only my wife has gotten 200 euros, whereas I have never gotten my 100 euros. So my wife's transaction has read the modified balance of the bank account before my transaction has been cancelled and rolled back. So this is known as a dirty read anomaly because this value was actually not a value that was committed to the database, but this value has been updated and later the transaction that has updated the value has been aborted and this update has been undone. So the read that has happened here was a dirty read. It has read the value that has never been committed to the database. So we've now seen different concurrency anomalies. The first one was the lost update anomaly. This happens if the effects of one transaction are lost due to some uncontrolled override of a second transaction. We've seen an inconsistent read anomaly. This happens if one transaction reads the partial result of another transaction. So this other transaction changes multiple values in the database. And the first transaction sees an intermediate value where some of the values are changed and others are not. So it does not see the initial state of the database, but it also does not see the final result. So it sees some inconsistent intermediate state. We have seen a dirty read anomaly. This happens if one transaction reads changes that are made by another transaction and this other transaction is not yet committed, so it's not yet finished. If the other transaction aborts and is rolled back, then this value that the first transaction has read is actually an illegal value that has never been committed to the database. And finally, we have seen also unrepeatable reads. This happens if one transaction reads some value in the database, which is afterwards changed by a transaction that runs concurrently. So the first transaction cannot repeat the read and get the same value. So in other words, the first transaction is still running, but it operates on stale data because the data has already been updated by another transaction while the first transaction is still running. To prevent these anomalies, the database management system ensures the so-called asset properties. And for the anomalies, the most important are the atomicity and the isolation. The atomicity ensures that transactions are either executed fully or not at all. So the problem that we've seen with the transfer of 500 euros from my checkings to my savings account, where the system has crashed just before the balance on the savings account is increased, cannot occur. Because either the transaction will be executed fully, so the checkings account will be decreased and the savings account will be increased, or the transaction is not executed at all, then also the checkings account is not decreased. The isolation ensures that multiple users can work and modify the database at the same time without seeing each other's partial actions. So they can work on the database as if they were working on it alone in isolation. So this means that this prevents the dirty read anomalies, the inconsistent read anomalies, the lost update anomalies, and so on. Also the durability and consistency are important. For instance, if you want to store 500 euros cash on your bank account, then once the transaction has been accepted, so you have handed over the cash, then you want that this update is durably stored in the database. Even if the bank system crashes and has to be rebooted, 
you want that your account balance is correctly updated and this 500 euros additional are still on your bank account. The consistency ensures that transactions will always leave the database in a consistent state where all the integrity constraints are upheld. So this means that transactions that would violate the consistency are automatically rejected by the database management system. 